So good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Nice to see you again for this second day of the virtual training on the SDG 241 indicator. I hope you have had the nice end of the day yesterday and that you have thought a little bit about all the discussion we have had uh, yesterday. Uh, so before starting, let me re uh, recapitulate a little bit quickly what uh, we have learned uh, yesterday. So we have introduced the SDG indicator 241. And as Pandiana explained as uh, one of the uh, 11 sub-indicators that are composing the SDG 241. So the first one, which is uh, uh, the first one of the uh, economic dimension. Um, and then we have still all the methodology to calculate uh, this indicator with also a practical exercise uh, on Excel. So it has been a very interesting day full of concepts and uh, many doubts have been clarified through the question and the answer sessions. Uh, so today we will continue with all the other sub-indicators. Uh, let's hope that we manage to cover all of them. Um, and then uh, we will have uh, uh, at the end of today, a presentation from a colleague of us uh, on the Agris and 50 by 20 initiative. I doubt we will manage to do other presentations, but let's see how goes the discussion. Of course, if we have time, we also move forward with the presentation on the, on the questionnaires and alternative data sources. Um, just to recap a little bit some rules, uh, you will see a few participants as panelists, which are the lead representative per country, and then we have many other colleagues that are uh, present only as the listeners. So probably you will not see uh, the names of these uh, uh, colleagues. Uh, please follow the meeting in mute mode and uh, unmute yourself only when we give you the floor. Uh, today we try to manage a little bit better the questions and answers the sessions because uh, um, uh, we need really to cover uh, still many other uh, presentations during today and tomorrow. So uh, we, we hope we can, we can be a little bit quicker, although of course uh, uh, we will answer all the questions. So in case uh, in the end we don't have time to really answer all the questions, we will answer them by email, so do not worry. As a reminder, also the, these, set, these sessions are being recorded and we will send you uh, the recording at the end of the three, three days. And also, um, please, you see you have the English and French interpretation available on the bottom bar. So in case uh, you want to follow in French, you put in French and in English, you put the English channel. If you stay on off, uh, it means that you will simply listen the um, original audio. So English when we speak and then French when some colleagues francophone uh, speak French. So. It's up to you. I think uh, that I said everything, so I will uh, give immediately again the floor to Aspandia for continuing the presentation. Any question and doubt, I'm here through the chat and I will be happy to help you for any concern you have. Thank you and I have a nice second day of this training. Aspandia, over to you. Thank you, very Stefania. Um... Um, welcome to again all of you on this second day of full training on F1. Um, so we started, we left yesterday the training. What we covered, Stefania briefly touched upon that. We covered the, we started off with, um, with the STG241 indicator in general. We covered, you know, the first sub indicator in the economic dimension. From output on land activity. The second sub indicator economic dimension, which is called the net from income. The theme is stability. The coverage for this uh, sub indicator is uh, all from and which I was referring to me in my yesterday for this particular sub indicator. We have kept the reference period legal here. I will explain as to you why. So before uh, you know, uh, I start uh, folding the uh, 
aspects of uh, this particular sub indicator let me give you a brief context um, as to as to what we mean by net from income within the context of uh, sdg 241 so an important part of stability in agriculture is the economic viability of agriculture holdings is driven to a large extent by profitability in the context to for profitability using that the farmer is able from farming operation on its agricultural holding availability and use of information on the uh, on the holding economic performance measured using profitability or income will support better decision making both at the micro and macro economic levels since performance measures drive behavior better information on performance can alter behavior and decision making by the government and producers um, both in the large scale commercial farming and medium and small scale subsistence agriculture so um the sdg 241 provides two options for approaches countries on how to report on this uh, sub indicator a sophisticated approach which fao obviously is recommending it's more precise and a second approach which is more simplified this is based on farmer declaration about um his net income in the last calendar years um sandhya well, sorry so sorry start. sandhya sorry to interrupt you yes. uh so this sound uh, the your voice at the end, at the beginning was breaking now it's much better but still not really 100% so i don't know if you can uh put yourself in a more internet connection uh, um, available so just to inform you i know if you can okay. move yourself or your uh, wifi is or something or your okay so is it better now yes yes i will inform you in case your voice breaks again oh okay so um so i was talking about options the first option is more sophisticated option the second one is a simplified approach which is based on farmer declaration uh, using the the net farm uh, uh, income yeah, sorry is... uh, yeah, no it's not it's not working you're still breaking the voice you want maybe to disconnect or reconnect again i don't um, know i'm just thinking aloud okay so let me okay So I will take a pause for maybe like five minutes. Let me reconnect. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Yes. So he is disconnecting now, and then he will connect again. So let's wait. He is back. In the meantime, in case you have uh, any question or doubt, so you want to. write something in the question and answer box you are more than welcome so uh yes as another reminder please any question uh please should be put in the question and answer box and not in the chat uh this will allow us to better um organize the questions because in the chat box sometimes messages are are lost So Stefania just confirming as to how my voice is now. Okay, now it seems it seems good. Okay. Yes, much better. Okay, good, good. So Okay, thank you. Sorry, sorry for this uh, slight hiccup. Um let me recollect as to what I just said. So for measuring the net farm income as I mentioned, we are offering or we are suggesting or recommending two approaches. The first one is sophisticated approach. Obviously, it's more complicated. It's more data demanding, and the second one is a more simplified approach, which is based on farmer declaration about his net farm income. 
So using the sophisticated approach, the net farm income is calculated using the following formula, um, which, is, which is given here. So then NFI is, uh, is an abbreviation for net farm income. CR is total farm cash receipts, including direct program payments. YK is income in kind. Uh, OE is operating expenses after rebates. This includes labor cost as well. Uh, DEP or debt is depreciation. And uh, delta IN is value of inventory change. Uh, this sophisticated approach, which is adopted from Statistics Canada, is recommended. However, its use at, uh, by the countries is made conditional if data on farm financial rec records, um, that is um, uh, documents or uh, daily, weekly, or monthly information about the transactions that happens on the farms are available. In general, large scale commercial farms maintain detailed financial records using which the net farm income can be calculated. Now, in terms of calculation of net farm income with this more sophisticated approach, what do we need as data items? So first item that we need is value of output. This is the same concept that we discussed yesterday as part of the productivity sub indicator. So what we need um, you know, as data items is the total physical quantities of the products that are produced by the agriculture holding multiplied by the farm gate prices. Okay, and this will give us the value of output. For crops, if it is a crop producing agriculture holding, for livestock, if it is a livestock focused agriculture holding, or a mix of both. If there are other activities, which I, which I explained yesterday um, in my presentation as part of the productivity sub indicator, if there are other secondary activity, activities on top of crops and livestock, produced by the agriculture holding, then we would need their quantities and prices as well. But until so far, in terms of data items, we are asking nothing new, okay? So this is the same information that will be utilized for the productivity sub-indicator as well as for the net farm income sub-indicator. In addition to this, uh, what we need, you know, for calculation of net farm income using the sophisticated approach are direct program payments, income in kind, and value of inventory change. Now, all these concepts that you are seeing here, um, you know, the, the detailed description or definitions of, uh, of, of these concept is given in the link, which is, which is provided in the bottom of, uh, of this slide. So this is one side of the equation, okay? This is uh, one, uh, you know, set of variables or data items that we need for us to estimate the total revenue or turnover of the agriculture holding. Now, obviously for us to calculate the income, we need to subtract, subtract the cost of production from that, uh, from that revenue uh, so that we are able to estimate the income uh, of the farmer. So for this, what we need is um, both uh, operating expenses as well as fixed costs and depreciation. So by operating expenses, we mean labor expenses, that is, wages that are paid in cash or in kind, fertilizer expenses, pesticide expenses, fuel expenses, electricity, cost of feeding the animal, irrigation costs, taxes paid, depreciation charges, and any other charges that the farmer is, um, is uh, utilizing um, in order to produce uh, the output in that particular area.
so this is this is obviously more data demanding approach that i just explained which was adopted from statistics canada now we we uh, we thought during the methodological development process that uh, no, you know especially in developing countries um, in subsistence agriculture holding um, financial records are not usually maintained so collecting information on all these data items in an agriculture survey might be maybe too demanding for for uh, for developing countries and hence as i mentioned earlier we suggested a simplified approach so the first simplified approach is we only collect we only ask countries to collect information on the uh, output value which i explained earlier on the operating expenses and in this option we suggest countries to ignore depreciation and uh, value of inventory change okay so this is the first simplified approach the second simplified approach is we just ask the farmer okay um as to uh, how his agriculture holding performed in terms of uh, uh, profitability over the last 3 years so it's a direct question to the farmer whereby we ask him was your holding profitable in the last 3 calendar years okay or was your holding profitable in the in 2 out of 3 years or one out of 3 years and based on his declaration to this uh, or or answer to this question um we then um, we then decide as to uh, what's the economic viability of this particular agriculture holding is now for the sake of um, reducing data collection burden on the countries we have um uh, integrated or we have designed this question in the survey module that we have developed for sdg 241 that i mentioned yesterday so in terms of how do we then assign sustainability statuses or the how do we use the traffic light approach for this particular sub indicator the agriculture holdings and the area that it is uh, basically um um using for production is assigned green status if it its profitability was above zero for the last three consecutive years the pro, the holding is classified as yellow or acceptable if its profitability or net farm income was um above zero for at least one of the past three consecutive years and the agriculture holding is classified as red or unsustainable if the net farm income or profitability um was below zero for all past three consecutive uh, years now as you may have noticed uh, the threshold for this sub indicator is set using three years data or recall by the holder or the farmer this is to make adequate assessment of the farm profitability over an extended period to account for a bad year due due to market failure that is uh, low prices of outputs or high prices of inputs in a in a certain year or negative ecological or environmental factors that may have negatively impacted the farm profitability that is heavy or untimely rains floods pest attacks etc so as i mentioned earlier um as part of the survey module that we have designed to collect information on sc241 we only have uh, a question um about um, about the farm profitability whereby we ask the farmer as um, what the profitability status of his agriculture holding was you know in in the past three consecutive years so based on that as you can see here um you know holding one 
was profitable in two out of the three years and hence we assigned it a yellow status. Holding two was profitable in three out of the three years and thus it was uh, classified as green or desirable. And lastly, holding number 181 was unprofitable in all three years and hence uh, it was uh, assigned uh, you know, a red status. Now the numbers that I'm showing you here, this was uh, basically um, a pilot test that we carried out in 2018-19 in Bangladesh. And as you can see here, um, using the approach that I just explained uh, uh, based on the fact as to how profitable the agriculture holding was in the, in the three consecutive years, we have assigned the farms and its agriculture areas, green, yellow, and red. We then aggregated greens, yellows, and reds, um, the agriculture land areas, and then we divided by the nationally representative um, agriculture land area to derive uh, you know, the proportion of uh, agriculture area that is uh, classified as green, yellow, and red. Now, let me, let me just show you the Excel sheet that I was showing you yesterday. Stefania, please confirm if you can see it. Yes. Okay. So as I was mentioning earlier, the question that we are asking in the survey module is how often this holding was profitable. Uh, while profitability means that value of production was greater than the total cost, whether fixed or variable. The reference period is last three calendar year. So as you can see, the, 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 the respondent can reply with, with with the following four options. Unprofitable for all three years, profitable in one out of three years, profitable in two out of three years, and profitable in three out of three years. And depending on his or her reply, we then assign green, yellow, and red status to the agriculture holding and its agriculture land area. So this was you know, the simplified approach that, that I was uh, talking about. Now, for the more sophisticated approach, as I explained to you earlier yesterday, what we need information on is the value of output for which we need physical quantities as well as the um, average or latest price so that we calculate the total value of production for the crops, for the byproducts of the crops, the same approach, For the livestock as well, the total uh, physical uh, uh, output as well as uh, the average or the latest prices, the products that are produced using livestock, its quantity as well as prices, and the quantity and prices of other on-farm products or activities if, if produced on top of crops and livestock as secondary activities, okay? So this is the revenue side of the thing. And now we need information on the, on the cost as well. What was the total cost of producing crops and or livestock and its byproducts? So how much were the wages? Cash wages, labor in kind, fertilizer costs, pesticide costs, fuel costs, electricity costs, and so on. So once this information is collected using the survey for, for, for all the um, agriculture holdings, what we need information on is, what we then need to do is, I'm focusing first on the sophisticated approach because the simplified approach is very straightforward and easy. So just one question and you can classify the agriculture holding as green, yellow, and red. 
for the sophisticated approach, we need more data, more data in terms of production every year, its quantities and prices, as well as information on the cost of inputs every year for three years. So as you can imagine, this is more, uh, um, you know, um, data demanding. So we have the value of output. We have information on direct program payments. We have information on income in kind, value of inventory change for three years. We have the cost of inputs for three years. And then we start subtracting the cost from the revenue for each year for us to estimate the exact situation as to whether the holding was profitable in that particular year. And based on as to whether the profitability was greater than zero or less than zero, we then start assigning the holding, you know, the green, yellow, and red statuses. So as you can see here, holding number one, which is exemplified here, this holding was profitable only in one out of the three years, and hence it was classified as, as yellow. And so on, we will, we will repeat the same exercise for the rest of the agriculture holding. So if you have any question, please, uh, you know, please feel free to, feel free to ask that. Okay, Sonia, thank you. We have a one first question. Uh, it's in French, so I'm reading it in French. Uh, je voulais demander si nous pouvons aussi avoir une note d'utilisation des Excel pour la meilleure compréhension. Um, so you mean to say what, what is needed in Excel format? I'm just, 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 just wanted to clarify. So he's asking not utilization. Uh, I'm not sure what does it mean in French, but I imagine something that ex explain, uh, the, all the steps that need to be done. Maybe if Mr. Pascal can explain a little bit better, what does it mean? Yes, for sure, for sure. I, I mentioned it yesterday and let me, you know, uh, emphasize and repeat it again, that all the documents that are needed for countries um, to estimate SDG 241 have already been translated into into French. Now, this Excel sheet, which, are, which we are showing you in English, um, will be available in French as well. And we will share that with you. So he is uh, um, he's saying something else. Sure. Je voulais savoir comment vous allez faire pour les enquêtes agricoles pour que les pays soient au même niveau. Um, well, I mean, this is, this is uh, something which we will discuss later today during one of the session on Agri-Survey Program and 50 by 2030 initiative. One of our colleague, Mr. Flavio Bolliger from the survey team will, uh, um, will introduce um, this uh, project, which is backed by FAO, World Bank and IFAD whereby we are supporting 50 developing countries or low or lower middle income countries from across the globe with agriculture survey program. So that's, that's one of the initiative whereby all SDG 241 plus other farm survey based SDG indicator that FAO is custodian agency for have been integrated into that project. So if your country is part of that project, um, then obviously 
um, FAO and these other multilateral institution in the next years will support you um, in, uh, technically for you to be able to standardize um, and customize your agriculture surveys um, for you to be able to report on all these indicators. So that's that's one uh, you know um, area of work which will be uh, explained in detail later on. Now, in terms of um, um, when will all countries be able to have SDG two for one needs incorporated into their agriculture surveys? This is something you know. Um, which we can influence to a certain extent through these projects, which I just mentioned, Agri-Survey Program and 50 by 2030 initiative. But else rest, it's up to the countries, right? If they believe that sustainability in agriculture is an important um, issue for them to, to uh, manage at the country level for them to improve the situation about agriculture sector, then, you know, uh, for the sustainability of uh, this particular process, um, we expect countries to be taking, you know, some proactive steps for them to be able to uh, integrate the SDG needs into their agriculture surveys so that they are able to. So on this very point, uh, as to when countries will be able to have a uniform agriculture survey. This is something, uh, you know, which is, which is uh, a country decision. Um, we cannot force countries to do something. We can only being a UN agency recommend support uh, to the best of our knowledge and our abilities and resource permitting. Um, um, uh, we can we can support them and facilitate them in adopting and impl implementing SDGs. But as for the decision um, regarding customization of agriculture surveys of a given country is concerned, that decision is solely um, and uniquely uh, up to the countries. Okay, thank you. We have another question. Isn't it difficult for the farmers to declare the profitability? Some crops are consumed, some are sold. How do the farmers compare the cost and the value of all the crops produced to declare the profitability? Yes, we are well aware of uh, this issue. Um, and hence, for this particular sub-indicator, um, we have to train very well the enumerators or the surveyors or the people who are administering the questionnaire in the field. We have to educate them and we have to train them properly. And all this information about how to train the enumerator is given in the enumerator manual that we have developed. Now, um, once the enumerator is in the field with the, with the respondent or with the holder or the farmer, asking him questions, he has to explain the concept of uh, profitability very thoroughly to the farmer. And he has to tell him that basically or her that, uh, you know, um, while estimating the total value of output, you have to think about, you know, all the uh, produce that you self consumed and you, you, you sold in market. So whatever is produced on the holding, irrespective as to whether it's consumed or it is uh, sold off, um, uh, this concept needs to be explained to the farmer by the, by the enumerator. Um, and secondly, farmers are very clever. Um, uh, let's, you know, and this is, this is my um, understanding that uh, we shouldn't be um, underestimating their intelligence. They know as to, as to how much expenses they are incurring um, for producing agriculture products on their agriculture holding. They may not be keeping the financial records, but they, they have an idea as to whether they made any profit or, or, or they incurred losses. 
Okay, another question. Is it clear that the simplified is for subsistence farming households? I am correct to conclude that this sophisticated approach is form of is for commercial farming system. Uh, we have uh, basically offered a set of options for countries to to consider while collecting information on this particular sub indicator. Now, if the commercial farming sector in a country is well advanced and they are keeping financial records um, of all the agriculture activities on, on um, you know, throughout the year, then we would suggest yes, have the simplified approach for the household sector and the sophisticated approach for the large scale commercial farms. Um, or else, you know, you can use the simplified approach to begin with for both household and non-household sector. So it, it, it is entirely up to the country um, in terms of uh, which approach they want to adopt or implement. Of course, uh, adopting the more sophisticated option um, will mean that you have to have more questions in your agriculture survey, and thus it will be costly to administer that agriculture survey. Um, but you know the benefit of having a sophisticated approach would be that your estimates will be more precise. So it's entirely up to you, uh, whichever approach uh, you may want to use in accordance with the uh, um, with uh, what's the situation like in terms of resources available to the National Statistical Office or Ministry of Agriculture, whomsoever is uh, responsible for administering agriculture survey. Okay, let me give the floor to Mr. Uh, Alexis uh, Mutembuzzi. Please, you have the floor, Alexis. Okay, thank you. Uh, my question is uh, uh, in relation to the timing or the time asked uh, to a farmer to precise if uh, his agacha has been profitable. Uh, I'm basing on the experience in my country. I'm from Rwanda. Our agriculture survey is conducted each season. And we uh, to get uh, the information from the farmer of the previous season. So I was wondering how uh, we can get information from the farmer of the previous three years. This, this means in, my con in the context of our country, it includes nine seasons going back. So, uh, my question is to, is it possible to adjust this question according to the context of the country? Maybe instead of asking all these uh, three years or maybe adjust it to, to the seasons and uh, see how we can compile this uh, indicator because I see it difficult to get information of, from the farmer of the last previous nine seasons, zero. No, I, I totally understand that. I mean, um, uh, recalling uh, information about nine seasons, uh, which, uh, which spans over three years, may be very complicated for the farmer. Um, yes, we can uh, discuss this uh, further um, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a bilateral uh, session as to whether we can uh, we can have uh, you know a customized solution for countries based on based on seasons rather than rather than years so but for the time being uh, the methodology as it sits now is is based on based on three years so um, and this is this is what uh, we are uh, you know um, recommending to countries to implement but of course, uh, we can we can have a separate discussion um, on on case by case basis for Rwanda um, as to as to how can we modify this particular sub indicator so that uh, you can collect uh, information uh, 
um, in a in a in a cost effective way. Okay, thank you. Okay, let me give the floor to Mr. Uh, Baubadi Atotsu. Bonjour, merci beaucoup pour la parole. En fait, je vais dans la, dans la même lancée que mon prédécesseur. Hein. Euh, oui, en fait, le, le problème, c'est qu'on compare le, le profit net de l'exploitation sur les trois années. Donc, cela voudrait dire que je voudrais faire des enquêtes donc, de façon longitudinale, c'est-à-dire avoir un échantillon représentatif conçu dans le temps. Donc, chaque année, et on fait l'enquête. Et puis, pour les mêmes exploitations, deuxième année, l'enquête aussi va porter sur les mêmes exploitations. C'est de cette façon qu'on peut voir et donc, et la dynamique donc, du profit net donc, pour chacune des exploitations. Donc, euh, sur ce, je, je voudrais que vous parliez un peu de ça. Est-ce que c'est est le système ou bien comment, comment vous... Parce que c'est de cette façon que moi, je vois la chose. Merci. Yeah, as, as, I, as I replied to the previous question, my, my answer would be the same. So in terms of uh, in terms of some agriculture surveys, uh, you know, especially the one um, which we um, which FAO is uh, is recommending to countries, which is which is Agri Survey Program, and this uh, 50 by 2030 initiative. Um, I believe over there there are questions about previous seasons as well. Okay, but going back three years for nine seasons, which certainly would be challenging. And we understand that. So let us have this discussion bilaterally. Um, I will, I will um, um, basically um, uh, have this with uh, Mr. Flavio Bolliger, who is a technical person in charge of Agri-Survey program. And uh, based on uh, the conclusion of uh, that discussion, um, I will then revert to you about this question as to whether we can uh, uh, tailor this sub-indicator in, uh, in terms of its recall period to something which is, which is manageable. Okay, we have another question, it's in French. Euh, bonjour, chez nous, nous comptons organiser les recensements généraux de la population couplée à l'agriculture en 2022. Ma question est de savoir si on peut intégrer des questions en rapport avec cet indicateur, avoir le temps du recensement. Si oui, pouvez-vous nous donner quelques exemples de questions et rapports avec l'indicateur à poser aux agriculteurs? So actually, as, as I highlighted earlier, the rationale behind us having each sub-indicator is given at length and in very detailed way in, in the support documents that I've been mentioning uh, you know, um, time and again. Um, so uh, if you are in process of administering your agriculture survey in the next months or in the, in the next uh, time period, maybe it's uh, in, in one year, then I, I believe that it is the right moment for you, to, for you to start customizing your agriculture survey with the questions um, um, of 241 for you to be able to collect information on um, um, on, on these uh, sub-indicators uh, um, uh, uh, for the next data collection cycle. Um, now, my only concern would be the, 
representativeness of the sample that uh, you have uh, selected for your agriculture survey, because um, uh, for 241, we are not only touching upon the economic aspects, but we are touching upon the environmental aspects as well. So the sample needs to be rich enough for it to be able to um, have estimates which are which are reliable for each part uh, sub indicator. But any in any case, um, the the very first step is for a country to analyze as to what the gaps are in their agriculture survey with a we SDG two for one data requirements. Once those gaps are are mapped, then uh, you know the additional questions that needs to be incorporated into your ag agriculture survey is, is, the, is the next step. So I, I, I think if, uh, if, uh, if you are planning on uh, um, administering your agriculture survey in the coming months, um, it may be the right time for you to integrate these questions into your agriculture survey for you to be able to report on the indicator. Okay, we have, I think, the last intervention for now, so I give the floor to Mr. S or no. Oui, merci. Uh, je vous ai juste posé la question sur, uh, je ne sais pas, cette formation me paraît très intéressante, peut-être c'est pour cela que je pose beaucoup de questions et le fichier Excel que vous avez développé, je le crois aussi qu'elle est très intéressant. Et ça va nous permettre, nous, les profs au corps de pays, pour bien traiter ces, ces données avec lesquelles nous allons collecter. Alors, euh, je pense que la, la FAO, son but, c'est d'avoir les données agricoles dans tous les pays pour que, euh, bon, pour dire que tous les pays soient dans, dans, dans le même niveau. Ma question était, est-ce qu'il est possible au niveau de la FAO d'impulser le, le projet de Contristat Contristat, comme vous le savez, est un projet très ambitieux et important pour tous les pays qui permettra que tous les pays soient au même niveau. C'est-à-dire, même si euh, on ne réalise pas, même s'il n'y a pas beaucoup de moyens dans les pays, mais avec ce projet de Contristat, euh, on peut, on, on, euh, qui, est, qui a le but d'actualiser... De, 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 le fichier dans, 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 dans le site, utiliser ces données directement s'il n'y si a pas une enquête agricole pour toutes les années. Comme vous le savez, tous les pays actuellement sont en, en, en déficit des, des moyens économiques pour la pandémie du COVID. Alors, est-ce qu'il est possible de, de, de pousser ce projet euh, qui, est, qui est important aussi pour, pour, pour les pays. Et je sais qu'il y a certains pays qui sont déjà adhérés à, à ces projets et qui, 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 qui ont déjà commencé à travailler, mais il y a aussi certains pays qui ne sont pas encore dans le projet. Merci. Uh, Sandiar, I think I'm going to answer this question. Uh, bon, um, merci pour la question. Uh, moi, uh, personnellement, j'ai été la responsable euh, des grands cristaux à l'AFAO. Donc, je peux bien répondre à ces questions. Euh, malheureusement, euh, le projet en termes d'assistance euh, technique au pays a été terminé en 2019. Donc, euh, il a été un projet qui a duré plus que 10 années et on a fait soit l'assistance technique au pays et soit euh, euh, construire euh, les sites web pour la dissémination des données. Euh, C'était un projet qui a été financé par euh, plusieurs fondations. La plus grande était la fondation de Bill et Melinda Gates. Et, euh, mais euh, après, euh, je veux dire, tout ce que disons, des euh, assistances au pays, la FAO euh, avait comme euh, projet quand même de terminer l'assistance technique, mais quand même laisser les sites web euh, disponibles pour euh, les pays pour disséminer euh, les données euh, euh, en, et toutes seules, je veux dire. Donc, euh, euh, l'assistance technique et financière de la FAO ne peut pas malheureusement être reprise euh, en ce moment. 
Et euh, donc, euh, la réponse euh, à votre question, malgré euh, soit euh, une bonne question et une bonne suggestion, mais euh, n'est pas possible. Donc, les projets ont officiellement terminé en 2019. So, Stefania, you may want to summarize, uh, you know, the question, uh, and uh, then maybe you were you were part of our stat, right? Or maybe yes. Yeah, yeah. So, so maybe you may want to have uh, some reaction to this question. Yeah, uh, I already Anything replied. Of, okay, you already replied. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, so uh, what what was the summary of your reply? Yeah, you are in English. I just said that uh, unfortunately uh, the assistance to the countries, so both financial and technical assistance, has ended in uh, 2019. So the FAO now is um, the website of countries that is still available for the countries to put their data and disseminate the information um, homogeneously among all the countries. But FAO, unfortunately, does not provide any more any kind of assistance on that project. Although the website is still available for the countries to use them. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, let me see. Uh, I don't think we have any other questions. Uh, I think we are done. Okay. So now, um, now that we have covered the net farm income sub indicator, the third and the final sub indicator in the economic dimension is risk mitigation mechanisms. Well, resilience has emerged as a key factor in sustainability. A Brazilian. Uh, entails absorptive, anticipatory, and adoptive capacities, and refers to the properties of the system that allow agriculture holdings to deal with external shocks and stresses, and to persist and continue to be well functioning. Um, in the context of SDG 241, the following external uh, shocks are uh, considered drought, which is a prolonged period of abnormally low rain, leading to shortage of water, flood, an overflow of large amount of water beyond its normal limits, especially over what is uh, normally dry land, pest, a destructive insect or other animal that take crops, food, livestock, etc., that can also uh, include heat waves, um, market shock, any demand or supply shocks that alter the price matching equilibrium in the market, price reduction for the commodity produced by the agriculture hoarding is, is one example. So as a shock coping mechanism or mitigation strategy, so that the farms continue to be sustainable, the SDG 241 proposes that the agriculture holding should have access to or availed insurance, which is a preventive protection measure to protect the holding against external shocks. Access to or availed credit, which may have been obtained from formal or informal sources, such as banks, relatives, or local money lenders. And lastly, the fact as to whether the agriculture holding is diversified. Um, diversification here is defined as the share of a single agriculture commodity produced or activity carried out is not greater than 66% in the total value of production of the agriculture. Now, the first two items, access to or availed credit and access to and avail insurance are fairly easy to collect information on. These are you know, this is one question in an agriculture survey whereby we ask the farmer as to whether he has access to the following risk uh, mitigation mechanisms. Do you have access to or availed credit? 
do you have access to or availed insurance? Um, and then, you know, based on the answer of the farmer, we can, we can know as to whether, whether these two um, mitigation mechanisms are in place. The third mitigation mechanism, which is farm diversification, um, for this, we need a bit of calculation. Now, what sort of information do we require for us to estimate the farm or the agriculture holding diversification is fairly easy. We have already collected that information within the context of land productivity, as well as the same information was utilized for the net farm income. So what we need information on is the total um, output value of all the commodities produced by the agriculture holding. We sum it up, it's the total value of output, right? And then we start dividing the individual commodity output value divided by the total value of output. And we see as to whether this percentage is less than or greater than 66%. If it is greater than 66%, this means that the agriculture holding is not diversified because it's reliant on or it's relying on um, uh, for its revenues or for its output value on one single commodity. If the percentage is less than 66%, this means that the agriculture holding is um, relying on more than one source of output value. And hence, uh, you know, um, its, its exposure to risk is, uh, is minimized or diversified. So how then we um, uh, classify the agriculture holdings as to whether, you know, these are green, desirable, yellow, acceptable, or red, unsustainable, it's fairly straightforward. If the holding has access to or availed at least two of the three mitigation mechanisms. So if it has access to credit, yes. If it has access to insurance, yes. So if two are satisfied out of the three, then you know that holding will be classified as green. If the holding has access to one of the mitigation mechanism out of the three, the holding will be classified as yellow or acceptable. If it has no access to the three mitigation mechanism, if it has no access to credit, if it, it has no access to insurance, and on top of that, it, if it is a monoculture, right? If it is reliant on, of, or if it is growing only one crop or raising only one type or kind of livestock, then for sure, it's very vulnerable to um, external shocks that could be, as I mentioned earlier, it could be price failure, it could be um, droughts, it could be pest attack, et cetera. So this is the, again, the data from the Bangladesh pilot study that was conducted in 2018 and 19. And uh, on top of the, information that we have already collected and reanalyzed for this particular sub-indicator, which is on the diversification part, because not, no new information is required. One question is asked about, uh, you know, access to insurance and access to credit. As you can see here, the holding number one, the share of commodity one in the total output value is 76%. So this holding is basically um, reliant on one single commodity for its revenues or for its output value. So the on-farm diversification in this case is zero. This farm is not diversified. However, it has access to credit and it has access to insurance. So the total number of adopted risk mitigation mechanisms are two out of three and hence, this holding is classified as green or desirable. The second holding, it's, you know, the revenue that it's generating from the three commodities that it is producing is, is even, okay? So 33%, 33%, and 34% from third commodity. 
and hence you know it's not relying on one single commodity for its revenue so this farm is diversified as per the criteria that we have uh, we have devised however it has no access to credit and no access to insurance and hence it has um, 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 it is practicing only one risk mitigation mechanism out of the three and hence we classified it as yellow or acceptable and the third one as you can see it's monoculture 100 percent income is coming from one commodity no access to credit no access to insurance and hence this holding is classified as non-sustainable the last step for each sub indicator is the same once we classified the agriculture holding and by, um, by, um, by that reasoning, the agriculture land area that it, is, uh, uh, that it owns, manages, or operates, uh, we then aggregate the areas classified as green, yellow, and red, and then we start dividing it by the nationally representative uh, agriculture land area to calculate the proportion of uh, um, area that are um, green, yellows, and reds. So now let me show you the Excel sheet. So for the risk mitigation mechanism, as I was mentioning to you earlier, the first question that we required uh, for us to collect information on this particular sub indicator is the same, the same question that we, we asked for productivity. So the total uh, output value or total value of production of crops by crop, it's by products. The total value of production of livestock and it's by products. The total value of production of other on-farm activities or commodities produced by the agriculture holding. And the fourth question, which I, which I just mentioned to you to see as to whether this holding has access to or availed the following uh, mechanism for protection against external shocks. So the option is, this holding has access to or availed credit. This holding had access to or availed insurance. Neither the holding had access to nor availed any of the above mechanism for protection against external shocks. So this is the only question that in addition to the above, which are required for the other two sub indicators as well, is needed for countries to report on this particular sub indicator. Now, how do we estimate as to whether the farm is diversified? Again, the same calculations are required. We need information on the average or the last price of the unit. We need the information on the physical quantities or the crops, as well as the livestock, if those are produced by the agriculture holding. We then estimate the total value of production based on the prices. It's, it's simple multiplication of the prices with the physical quantities, as you can see here. So the total value of output is 1477. We then start dividing the respective individual commodity output value divided by the total output value, which is 1477. So as you can see here, you know, this is done for each commodity. And then we need to check as to whether this percentage is above 66% for any of the commodity. If it is above 66%, the farm will be classified as non-diversified. If it is less than 66%, then the farm will be declared as 
has diversified in terms of its production. So I stop here. Let's take a 10 minute break and okay. um, instead of five minutes and then we resume in, 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 in like 10 minutes. Okay. So we resume in 10 minutes sharp. So at 12.30 Italy, Italy time, we continue. So have a nice break. Okay, it's 12.30 in Italy. So I, we can uh, continue uh, with the presentations. We don't have any question, any raise hand. So as Pandar, you can continue with the sub indicators in the economic, in the environmental dimension. Perfect. Thank you, Stefania. So just uh, bear me, bear with me for a second. All right, so welcome back. And um, so we have just finished the three sub indicators in the, in the economic dimension. Now we have now entered the, the second dimension of SDG 241, which is uh, environmental. So the first sub indicator in the environmental dimension is prevalence of soil degradation. Um, just to give you some context, FAO and the Intergovernmental Technical Panel on Soils have identified 10 main threats to soil health. These include soil erosion, soil organic carbon losses, nutrient imbalances, acidification, contamination, water logging, compaction, soil sealing, salinization, and loss of soil biodiversity. Now, after a careful review of the 10 threats to soil health, um, and after deliberation with both in-house and external experts, um, it was evident that all except one, which is soil sealing, um, are potentially and primarily affected by inappropriate agriculture practices uh, carried out by the holder or the farmer on the agriculture holding. So in the context of SDG 241, we have selected four main threats to soil health that are more or less in general, universal uh, globally. So the first one is soil erosion. While erosion, as you may know, refers to the wearing away of the field's topsoil by the natural uh, physical forces of water and wind. These can be accelerated, uh, accelerated or reduced as a function of farming activities such as tillage. The second one is reduction in soil fertility. Fertility refers to the capacity of the soil to provide crops with essential nutrients without reduction in productivity over the years. Reduction in soil fertility implies a situation in which the capacity of the soil to provide crops with essential plant nutrients tends to reduce from one area to another. Water logging refers to a situation of water stagnation on the land surface or excessive volume of water on the land surface affecting production. And salinization, um, salt accumulation on the, on the land surface. Or it could be any other. So this is, this is what I was explaining in the, in the previous session that here countries can contextualize the two for one methodology according to the reality on the ground or according to their needs. So apart from these four um, threats to soil health, if the country 
um, sees or if the country experienced any other um, threats to soil health, then they may want to include that and skip one listed here, um, uh, you know, on this slide. So within the context of two for one, like, uh, you know, the previous sub indicator, a simple question is asked in the farm survey to capture farmers knowledge or declaration about the situation of the agriculture holding um, in terms of soil degradation. Now, having said that, and many of you may wonder that uh, all soil under the agricultural land area in a country should be subject of periodic monitoring in order to assess the impact of agriculture on soils. Okay. Um, this, these monitoring tools includes maps, models, results from soil sampling or laboratory analysis, ad hoc field surveys, and other existing reports on soil and land de degradation at the national or subnational level. However, why we are proposing a question in agriculture survey, which is a more subjective measure of soil health rather than a more objective measure, which could be soil sampling, is because that many countries, uh, while we were deliberating the methodology with them uh, in the earlier stages, um, reported and uh, highlighted that these data sources are usually very costly. Um, but, and hence we, we said that we are gonna ask a simple question based on farmer declaration rather than uh, using a more objective measure of uh, assessing soil health. Now, if these more objective measures in terms of uh, laboratory analysis if it exists, then it may either be used to complement the information collected through the farm survey, or can also be used to cross check the farmer responses which are given um, um, for a certain territory. So we are not ruling out um, the possibility of using other data sources for checking soil health if those exist that can provide additional contextual information um, as well as it can also be used to triangulate and validate and cross check the farm survey results. Sorry. So in terms of thresholds, how the the threshold for this particular some indicators are, uh, are designed. It's very simple. So the farms and its agriculture area are classified as green. If the combined area of the agriculture holding affected by any of the four selected threats to soil health is less than 10% of the total agriculture area of the farm. So if, if combinedly these four threats exist, or if any of these four threats exist, and if it is um, um, affecting less than 10% of the holding area, then the agriculture holding will be classified as green in percent of the total agriculture area of the farm, then um, the holding will be classified as, as red. Here are the results of, uh, of uh, again, Bangladesh uh, pilot tests. As you can see, holding number one, we asked them, you know, a straightforward question as to, you know, how did you experience these four threats on your, on your farm and the farmer said either yes or no, okay. So soil erosion, no. Reduction in soil fertility, yes. Water logging, yes. Salinization, no. This holding didn't react to the 
to the fourth option, which is other specify. So if, if, if the holding is experiencing any other problem on its soil, apart from these four listed here, then the country may want to replace one of these with the one which is pre prevalent, you know, or which is relevant for, 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 for their country. The total agriculture land area of the holding is 0.9 hectares. The total agriculture area affected by, by the threat, by these two threats is 0 0.40, which amounts to 45%. Now, if you recall from the previous slide, if the combined area affected is between 10 to 45% of the, of the holding area, then we will classify it as acceptable or yellow, okay? So hence, this was classified as acceptable. Holding number three, um, they answered no to all these questions. The total area of the holding was 0.2 hectare. Zero percent of the area is affected. Hence, this holding was classified as desirable. And holding number four, as you can see here, they have two uh, issues um, um, on their holding uh, uh, soil. The total holding size is 0.27. The total area effect is 0.20 and hence this holding is classified as non-sustainable. And the last step again is the same. We aggregate the areas classified as greens, yellows and reds. We divide that by the nationally representative uh, um, uh, agricultural land area collected through the sample agriculture survey to derive this uh, proportion of uh, agriculture land area um, um, which are which has issues with, uh, with with soil health so now let me let me just quickly show you the excel sheet because the working for this is uh, is very straightforward it's not complicated at all all we need to ask is a, is a question and the rest is uh, taken care of. So as you can see here, here is the question that to be asked in the survey module. Have you experienced any of the following soil degradation threats on your holding? So soil erosion, reduction in soil fertility, water logging, salinization and other specify, okay? Or none of the above. So using this question, once they, you know, once they have highlighted, I have issues with these two uh, threats on my holding, there is a follow-up question. What is the total area of the holding affected by any of the threats identified above? So total area affected. And, you know, the farmer will, give us a rough approximation as to how much area is affected by, by that particular issue or by, by, by that particular threat. And using this set of information and the information that we have already collected about the, the total area of the, of the holding, we will. So this is, this is the information about the total area of the holding. If you remember, we use the CAAFF uh, or WCA um, 2020 uh, classification of uh, agricultural land area. And based on, based on the, this, these two questions, uh, we then, so analyze information, soil erosion, no, reduction soil fertility, yes, water logging, yes, salinization, no, other, no. Total area of the holding is nine, total area effective affected as five, it's a simple formula, you divide five by nine to arrive at the percentage. And so on. Okay. And so on, I mean, we, we start classifying the, the areas highlighted as green, yellows, and reds. So in this case, holding one, because 
greater than 50% of its area is affected by these two threats. Hence, it's classified as non-sustainable. 0% uh, desirable, less than 10% is also desirable. Between 10 and 50% is acceptable and so on. And then we start adding up the area classified as green, yellows, and reds. And we estimate the, estimate the percentages. So I stop here. No question and no hand raised. Let's wait for one minute if there is uh, someone yeah. is thinking about a question. Okay, we have a raised hand. Mr. Hazan, on to you. Oui, merci. Euh, oui, les questions, c'est sur les jeunes, c'est sur, comment dire, les, les jeunes agricoles ou les jeunes cultivables. Les questions qu'on pose là, est-ce que c'est -ce est sur la jeune agricole ou bien c'est sur les jeunes cultivables? Ce n'est pas, bon, c'est pas très clair à ma tête, je voulais savoir, est-ce que c'est sur les jeunes cultivables ou ou c'est sur les jeunes parce que c'est vrai que c'est on parle des sols de, 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 dans la dégradation des sols est-ce que dans ces euh, dans ces dégradations est-ce que on parle des de jeunes cultivables ou des jeunes agricoles merci no as I, as I explained earlier two for one is estimated and assessed at the agriculture holding level. So we are always talking about farmland. Everything which is beyond farm is not part of the scope of SDG 241. So think of you know, all the issues um, that uh, comprises or that SDG 241 entails that we are discussing in turn all of these are assessed at the agriculture holding level or farm level. So we are always talking about the farm land. Okay, we have another question from Mr. Nick Wimbitanga. You have the floor, please. Mr. Nick Wimbitanga, you can unmute yourself and speak if you want. Okay, let me ask a question from Mr. Duvi in the meantime. What is the reason for replacing a prevalent street of a country on the list instead of selecting others? Uh, sorry, come again. What, what is, is the reason for replacing a prevalent street of a country on the list instead of selecting others? Did you get um, it, Antonia? No, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to trying to understand the question. Look, um, I mean, we we have listed four, okay, and then we have an option given for the fifth one, okay. Other specify. So let's say, for example, if these four are not relevant for your country, okay. You just, you know, you, you, you are not even, you, you should not bother yourself to ask information about these four because many countries know, right, a priori that as to what the threats are to their soil health. So if salinization or water logging is not an issue in a certain country, they shouldn't be 
adding this option to their agriculture survey in first place. If there is any other issue which is threatening the health of the soil at the farm level, then they should be adding you know, that particular issue to the list uh, in, in, as a replacement for the one which are listed here. This is when I was explaining that uh, you know, SU241 allows country the flexibility to tailor or contextualize the methodology according to what's happening on the ground. So uh, if I understood the question uh, appropriately, uh, we don't force countries to ask this question if you know, the options given are irrelevant. Of course, if the options are relevant, then they should be collecting information on those. On um, aside from those, if uh, there are other threats, they may they may want to add those to the list. Yeah, I think that's when yeah, we have another question that replies a little bit what you were saying. So he's saying if we're rating the degradation based on the four criteria, what is the use of other in the questionnaire? So I think that this is. So which which I which I just explained, right? Exactly, so, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So so not necessarily these four criteria. I mean, if there is an other issue which is uh, which is a major issue for your country, you may want to add that one, and and then start assessing based on that threat. Yes. As well. yes. Yes. Sorry, I was speaking on mute. So there is Mr. Ulaye with, uh, who would like to take the floor. Okay. Oui. Okay. Merci. Bonjour. Eh, tout d'abord, je remercie très bien le présentateur et toute l'équipe. Et surtout, le matin, depuis le matin, il avait commencé à féliciter les interprètes. Et très bien, ils ont permis vraiment de bien suivre cette formation. Donc, j'ai une seule question, je ne sais pas. Bon, moi, je suis un pays côtier, c'est-à-dire un pays entouré par la mer. Bon, il y a les îles chez nous, ou, ou les zones chez nous, qui sont entourées par l'eau de mer. Parfois, l'eau de mer déborde et va dans les champs, les cultures. Là. Euh, comment on peut vraiment utiliser ce concept-là par rapport à ça? Merci. Yes, so as mentioned, uh, you know, in, in one of the option, I mean, if it is water logging, if it is a water logging kind of a situation, uh, there is uh, um, one uh, additional explanation given, including by floods. So this water logging can be, um, can be, you know, a certain characteristic of the soil because of the agroecological conditions there or it could also be triggered by, by floods, right? Um, uh, in, a, in a certain season. So in, in, in this case, I mean, um, it will be considered under the water logging uh, option. Um, of course, a, a further specification would be required that this is due to um, raising level of, of, of the sea in a certain time period. Okay, uh, Mr. Ambroise, maybe now you have fixed your problem with the microphone. You would like to take the floor. <laughs> Mr. Nick Wimbatanga. Maybe there is a, a mistake with the raised hand. So I leave the floor to Mr. Becker. Hello? Yes, okay. You have the floor. Ah, tu m'entends maintenant? Yes. Ok, merci. Oui. Ok, j'avais la question à rapport avec euh, la manière dont on va utiliser pour collecter les informations euh, par rapport au sort, notamment par exemple la salinisation. Est-ce que vous voyez que serait facile euh, à poser ces questions? Euh, au, 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 au ménage pour savoir si le sort est, est possède une salinisation ou pas. 
puisque je pense que ça demande beaucoup d'outils ou bien les, les matériels sophistiqués pour savoir la, les caractéristiques du sol. Voilà ma, ma préoccupation. Je ne sais pas si vous avez entendu ma, ma préoccupation. So yes, um, for all okay. these um, issues that are highlighted as part of this particular sub-indicator, we are relying on farmer declaration and his knowledge and his experience with the um, soil quality of his agricultural holding or her agricultural holding. Now, in terms of us using more objective methods for collecting information about, um, about soil health, may, they, that may be salinization or soil fertility, et cetera, for that, obviously, we need to carry out soil sampling, but that is not the approach that SG241 is recommending, okay? Because as I mentioned earlier, collecting that sort of information is, is very costly. And hence, and hence we, we, we would like to you know, use the information based on farmer declaration rather than using a more sophisticated option. We believe and we, we think that uh, uh, farmer is very knowledgeable about each plot and parcel of his agriculture holding. And he knows exactly as to what the problems are, at least the major problems are with the, with the, with the soil of his uh, farmland. So given that assumption, um, um, you know, we collect this information uh, from the farmer. But obviously, once this question is asked, you know, the enumerator has to explain as to what do we mean by soil erosion? What do we mean by salinization? What do we mean by, by uh, water logging? So a brief explanation is given to the respondent before uh, once the question is asked so that we get you know an appropriate reply from the from the farmer or the holder okay thank you Spanier. we have another question it's in french il est important de clarifier l'unité statistique mesure de cet indicateur c'est vrai que vous avez dit l'exploitation agricole mais j'aimerais que vous fassiez les liens entre l'exploitation et les ménages agricoles. So the statistical unit for us is agriculture holding. Okay. So we collect information about the agriculture holding and by, by virtue of that, we ask this, this question to the holder of the agriculture holding. So, so whomever is owning the, 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 the area or is, uh, is operating that particular agriculture holding, the, ho the household of that person or the head of the household of that person will be asked this question. Now, there could very well be instances whereby the respondent could be the owner of that particular holding, or he could be the co-owner of that particular holding, or he, he could also be a manager of that particular holding. So all these questions will be asked not to all rural households, but to the household who have, um, you know, um, involved in agriculture production activities. So from this perspective, uh, you know, um, for us, the statistical units are the households of the agriculture holding rather than the, um, instead of the entire rural population uh, living on, uh, um, living in agriculture uh, areas. Uh, so I think that Mr. Ambras would like to um, complement uh, some question about that, an answer about this question. So Mr. Ambras, you have the floor. C'est la même question qui a rapport avec euh, l'unité statistique. 
Il y a certains pays qui n'ont pas encore mené des recensements au niveau de l'agriculture de l'élevage. Et quelques fois, les, 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 les bases de sondage que nous utilisons, ce sont les chefs de ménage qu'on a identifiés pendant les recensements de la population. Alors, qu'en est-il pour ces pays qui n'ont pas encore eu une base de liste des exploitations Est-ce que tu m'as saisi? So yes, I mean, uh, if uh, if you don't have an agriculture census uh, recently conducted, then um, it would be it would be you know a bit of a problem. It would be a challenge. So for any agriculture survey, forget about SG two for one. For any agriculture survey that um, you may want to conduct, um, you know, basically. Um, an updated information about, uh, you know, um, on the list frame or the area frame is required for you to, for you to select your sample size. So that is, um, would, be, would be a challenge for many countries who don't have an updated list or area frame for their agriculture areas. So um, this is something uh, which the country needs to think about, not only for SDG 241, but for any agriculture survey. Okay, we have another question. It's in French. Uh, cette montée des eaux est-elle mesurable? Uh, sorry, come again. So is this rising of the water level measurable? Uh, well, you know, that, that's what I just explained. So, so, you know, the farmer, at least he would know or she would know, right? As to, as to whether his or her fields are submerged in water in that particular time period. Because we are asking all these questions to the farmers who are selected as part of the sample. So he or she would know as to whether the water has uh, risen to a level whereby you know, it's uh, not uh, conducive for the growth of the crops that they have uh, cultivated. So, um, Specifically as to whether, uh, you know, is water rise measurable, uh, I may not have um, um, a definite technical answer because that's not my core skill set. Maybe some other unit, uh, uh, some other colleagues within FAO would be better placed to give you that answer as to, as to how it's measurable and what are the means and ways through, through, through which it can be measured. But we are specifically uh, you know, um, interested in, in an infor information um, uh, at the agriculture holding level, and we are asking this question to the farmer, and he sh and she would know, right, uh, as to whether his crops or fields were submerged, which threatened their production in in a given season or in a given year. Um, how much water rose? Uh, and what level is uh, is inimical or dangerous for uh, for for the production is uh, is 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 in a way um, we don't need that much precise information. All we need is as to whether there was uh, um, increase in water level and whether that threatened the production of the farmer in in in, in any way. Okay, great. Thank you, Spanjar. Uh, we don't have any other questions, so I imagine we can move forward with the fifth sub indicator. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So, 
the second sub indicator in the environmental dimension is variation in water availability. Okay. Um, agriculture, more specifically, ir irrigated agriculture is by far the main economic sector using freshwater resources. In many places, water withdrawal from the rivers and groundwater aquifers is beyond what can be considered environmentally sustainable. Sustainable agriculture therefore requires that the level of use of fresh water for irrigation remains within the acceptable, acceptable boundaries. Um, while there is no internationally agreed standard of water use sustainability, signals associated with unsustainable use of water typically include progressive reduction in the level of groundwater, drying out of springs and rivers, and increased conflicts amongst water users. Um, this sub-indicator captures the extent to which agriculture contributes to unsustainable patterns of water use. Now, irrigation used on the holding means that water, other than rain, is applied to crops at least once during the entire reference period, that is the last uh, three calendar years. To elaborate further, um, water can be sourced using different methods. Um, apart, you know, using well irrigation, which is uh, which is the method of irrigation where water, where underground water is tapped through a, a well. It could either be a tube well or an open well. Second, water supplied directly by diverting it from the river through canals using gravity, or pumping it from the river, lake, or under water or under under uh, uh, or, or groundwater. And third, water can be applied on the field through sprinklers or, or micro irrigation that is uh, also called a drip irrig irrigation. Now, on top of this, um, water allocation um, in many countries, water allocation to farms is implemented by organizations mandated to ensure the delivery of water to different users to according to uh, established users. rules. Uh, these organizations are usually called water users organizations, water boards, water districts, uh, etc. These, these organizations and institutions can be public, owned by the farmers or, uh, or private operators. So how the thresholds for this particular sub-indicators, uh, sub-indicator are framed. The holding is classified as green if water availability remains stable over the years for the farms irrigating crops on more than 10 percent of its agriculture land area okay the farm will be automatically classified as green if it is irrigating less than 10 percent of uh, its agriculture land area the agriculture holdings will be classified as yellow or acceptable if it is using water to irrigate at least 10% of its agriculture area, does not know as to whether the water availability remains stable over the years or experience reduction on water availability over the years, but there are no organization that effectively allo allocate water amongst the users. And the holding will be classified as red in all other cases. By all other cases, I mean to say the holding is using water to irrigate greater than 10% of its agricultural land area. Um, it experienced reduction in water availability over time. And there are no organizations that efficiently um, and equitably allocate water amongst the different uh, users in that particular area. Now, this is the result from, from Bangladesh. Again, we ask farmer two or three questions. The first question is, are you using water for irrigation? The farmer could either say yes or no. If the answer is yes, we go to the follow-up question. 
have you experienced reduction in water over time? The farmer may say, yes, I have experienced reduction. Or he can say, no, water is always available in sufficient quantity, okay? And based on the answer to these questions, then we start, you know, um, classifying the holding as radial and green. So in, in, let's focus on the first holding. Question asks, whether you use water for irrigation? Yes, no, yes. How much area are you use, using water to irrigate? Okay. 89.7% of this particular holding area is irrigated. Okay. But water is always available in sufficient quantity. So the water availability and access to water is not an issue at all in that particular area. And hence, we classify this holding as, as green. Holding number two. Um, are you experiencing reduction in water availability? Yes, water level in my wells is progressively going down over time. Okay. Then the follow-up question is, are there organizations that uh, uh, help you allocate the water effectively? And the farmer says, yes, there are organization and they're working well. We classify this holding as acceptable. The third case, water level in my wells is progressively going down. No, there are no organization that effectively allocate water. He is irrigating 74% of uh, uh, his agriculture land area of that particular farm. And hence this holding is classified as unsustainable. And the last um, uh, table is the same like uh, for, uh, for other sub-indicators, we aggregate or add up the areas classified as greens, yellows, and reds, and we divide it by the national representative area for us to estimate the proportion under green, yellow, and red. So let me go to the Excel sheet now. Question, did this holding use water to irrigate crops? Okay. The re responses or the options given are yes. If yes, then indicate the percentage or, or area of the holding that was irrigated. Area was given as six, the unit of measures were high tears. Second, no, I don't need irrigation. No, I cannot afford irrigation. No, there is no water available. Okay, these are no has several other responses, okay? So if the answer is yes, then we go to another question. Are you observing reduction, any reduction in water availability from well or other sources? That is lake, canal, or river. The response is, is no water is always available in sufficient quantity when I need it. Second option is yes, water level in my wells is progressively going down. The third option is yes, water in the river, lake or canal is getting scarce and I can't have reliable supply when I need it. And the fourth option is I don't know. Then are there organization dealing? So the follow-up question would be, are there organization dealing with water allocation in the area where the holding is located? The options are yes, and they are working well. Yes, but they are not working well. No, there are none, I don't know, okay? And of course, the other information that we need is the total area of the holding, which is, which is, uh, which is us only once. So let's go to the workings.
Yes, water is used for irrigation, reduction in water availability. No, water is always available in sufficient quantity. Okay. Total area irrigated is six. Agriculture area of the holding in hectare is nine. Percentage of total area irrigated is 66.6%. Even this holding is irrigating 66% of its total farm area. It still is classified as desirable because as per condition, water, you know, the first one is water availability remains stable over the years for the farms irrigating crops on more than 10% of its agriculture area. The second one, yes, I use water to irrigate crops. Reduction in water availability, I don't know. It's a default result for farm irrigating less than 10% of their agriculture area. And hence we classify this farm as green as well. Non-sustainable, are you using water to irrigate crops? Yes. The second question, water level in my wells is progressively going down, yes. Are there organization? No. This farm is irrigating, using water to irrigate 40% of its area, but the water level is going down. There are no organization to allocate water and hence we will classify this holding as non-sustainable and so on. And we use the same logic for, for all these agriculture holdings. And lastly, as I mentioned, we then add up the areas classified as greens, yellows, and reds based on this condition, and then estimate the percentages or proportions. So do you have any question? We have Mr. Mutebuti who would like to take the floor. Uh, thank you. Uh, Han, would you bl please bring back the, the last uh, Excel sheet on the screen? Yeah, the, the last, the last uh, sustainability status. Yeah, yeah, up, 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 the, the, the previous table, the previous one. Yes, this one. Uh, my, I, I did not get well, uh, which, which factor here, based on threshold definition, which, which column in this, in this table helps us to define the last sustainability status of, uh, the, the, each each holding. Okay, is so the percentage there is not. Is it the percentage? So there, there is a there is a, yeah yeah. So so I, I got your point. So there is a combination of information uh, given in this table based on which you will be classifying the farm as green or uh, yellow yeah. or red. Okay, so it's not one piece of information. It's a combination of different information from this table. So in this table, you know, like say, for example, we'll start from column number one, okay? Mm -hmm. We first need to establish the fact as to whether water is used for irrigation or not. If the holding is not using any water for irrigation or less than 10% of water for irrigation, we don't, need, we don't have to go to the, to the other conditions, okay? So if the answer to the question is, I use water on less than 10% area uh, holding for irrigation, then we by default classify that holding as, as green. So, so let's say, for example, holding two, use water for irrigation. We don't even have to go to these conditions. Okay. So, you know, we can uh, simply ignore these uh, the responses to this question because it's using water on less than 10% of its agriculture area. And hence, we will classify it as desirable now the, the 
other information comes into the picture once the holding is using water on more than 10% of its agriculture area, which is, which is in this case, right, the holding one. So in this case, we will then ask the question as to whether you are experiencing any reduction in water uh, availability. If he says, no, water is always available in sufficient quantity, then we don't have to go to the next condition, which is when we ask about the organization for water allocation. So we will stop here. So we will stop here and th this, this information is sufficient for us to classify this holding as green. So let me go up and as you can see here, water, I'm using water uh, for irrigating crop, but water availability remains stable over the years for the farm irrigating crops on more than 10% of its agriculture area. So the moment we receive a reply from the farmer um, mm -hmm. that his water availability is stable, even if he's, he, even if he's irrigating more than 10% of his agriculture uh, area of the holding, um, we will classify him as green because the water availability is not a problem for him. The problem begin, uh, uh, becomes, uh, you know, uh, more alarming uh, once we, he is using water for irrigation on more than 10% of his agricultural land area. Mm -hmm. And the water availability is reducing once we receive a reply from him that yes, I'm experiencing decrease in water availability, which is which is uh, holding number three. Okay. Then we need to ask him a follow up question as to whether there are organization which are efficiently or effectively allocating water amongst the different uh, users right or the different agriculture producers. Mm -hmm. And based on that reply, if we say no, there are none, then you know we will classify him as, as non-sustainable. So it's a combination of staggered information, one on top of another, which is used to classify a holding as a green, yellow, red. Okay. So, so it's uh, not a single piece of information. So, so sorry, uh, for the, the, the holding number three. What happens yes. if if there is an organization that deals with water allocation? What could be what what can change if we replace this uh, response from the farmer by having an organization? Hello. we cannot hear you. Aspanjar, hello. Mm. Oh, I think he left. Oh, maybe he had some connectivity issues. Let's wait a bit that he comes back. Let's wait another minute then if he 
is not able to join, we, we can go through uh, the next presentation that I will be presenting. So let's wait another minute, sorry. Okay, he sent me a message saying that he figured it out how to connect again. Uh, so still a few seconds and then we decide if we wait for him or if we, if we move to the next presentation. Okay, he said he will he will he will join again soon, so let's wait.
Hello, Stefania. Okay, you're here. So, uh, was 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 there any progress in my absence, or uh, I'm sorry for 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 this light uh, glitch? <laughs> yeah, no, don't worry. I gave them uh, minutes of break, so we can resume okay. where we are. At. Okay. So let me quickly go back to the Excel sheet which we were discussing. Okay. So we were on on this table yes yep. so let's uh, resume so uh, my, my question was uh, are you hearing me yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. I'm, uh, I can. okay so my question was then on uh, the holding number three yeah the first two conditions are made they are using mm -hmm. water for irrigation and they have a level of water uh, going down. And then I was asking, what if we replace uh, on the third criteria that they are having organization dealing with the water allocation? So what would be the consequence on the st sustainability status of this holding in this case? So yes, so in this case, I mean, let me let me explain, right? So in this particular case, which is holding number three, they are using water for irrigation. They are using yeah. water for irrigation on more than 10% of, uh, of its area, right? Okay. Now they, they have experienced, uh, you know, reduction in water availability as well, as you can see from their answer, right? Yep. You know, then the fourth question and the ultimate condition based on which we then assign red or, or, or yellow color, or we change from yellow to red, is mm -hmm. as to whether there are organizations, well, you know, in that area that are efficiently allocating water. So if mm -hmm. he says, yes, there are organizations and those are working well, then we will classify that holding as yellow. If he says, no, these are organizations, uh, you know, um, 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 there are no organizations, okay, uh, for allocating water, then that will be the determining factor based on which we will classify this holding or turn this holding from yellow to, to red, okay? So that becomes then the, the ultimate, uh, ultimate uh, you know, condition for uh, re reclassifying the holding from yellow to red. So this is this is in a way incremental information that we 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 ask the farmer. Okay, first irrigation, how much area? Then you know, uh, I, I, are they experiencing reduction in water availability? Yes, no. If yes, then are there organization which are effect, effectively allocating water? Yes, no. If no, then you know, we turn the holding as red because you know, the water availability over time in the future, in the, in the future will, will become a very major issue in that particular area. And the government has to do something about, about this issue, either by putting in place, you know, organization that effectively allocates water so, so, so as to avoid conflicts amongst the, amongst the population. Secondly, uh, not only conflict, but to allocate water or ration water appropriately so that the the, you know, uh, it could be utilized efficiently. And secondly, it needs to do something about, uh, you know, the, the um, uh, decrease in uh, water, uh, of underground water availability as well. Okay, if, if, if the farmer is using that for irrigation. And now uh, uh, we have invited over another colleague of ours, Mr. Flavio Boliger from the Agris Survey Program. Um, he will be presenting the not only Agris survey, uh, but as well the 50 by 2030 initiative and SDG 241 within the context of that particular project. So there will be a slight deviation from the methodological discussion that we are having now to more data collection, but um, um, that is the only slide slot available with Mr. Flavio and I, 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 I I expect that you will um, you will be um, willing and um, 
you to accommodate you know uh, that presentation um, uh, though, though there is a slight uh, you know disorganization in terms of uh, the turn of that presentation in 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 the series of the emails so let me quickly go to the to the next slide Okay. So the last sub indicator for today and the sixth one um, in the framework of SDG 241 is um, management of, uh, of fertilizers. In the context of 241, sustainable agriculture implies that the level of chemicals in the soil and the water bodies remains within acceptable thresholds. Um, now, this particular sub indicator is constructed using data collected through a set of question asked to the farmer about the practices um, that he um, um, is adhering to or applying or the management measures that he has put in place in order to um, you know, abate or curtail the negative impact of fertilizer on the soil and the water. Okay, so these are the set of uh, measures that uh, you know have been discussed uh, with the with the experts, both in house at FAO and outside FAO, and um, in depending on the extent to which these measures are adopted by the farmer or the holder, sustainability statuses are assigned to the agriculture holding. I'm not gonna go through each management measure individually because uh, as I mentioned earlier, all these measures have been thoroughly explained in the enumerator manual. Stefania has just provided you with the link and at that link, you can, you can access each sub indicator and you can look through all these management measures separately to understand as to what do we mean by that. So let me just quickly go to the thresholds that we have uh, selected for, uh, for, for this particular sub indicator. So if the agriculture holding or the farm uses fertilizer, but take at least four specific measures to mitigate the environmental risks associated with the use of fertilizer, then the holding will be classified as, as green. If the holding is not using any fertilizer whatsoever, then it will be automatically classified as green. Given the fact that here we are assessing the negative impact of the fertilizer on the environment, okay? So if the holding is not using fertilizer, from environmental perspective, this holding will be classified as green. If it is using fertilizer and it is taking four measures out of these eight, then the holding will be assigned green status. The holding will be assigned yellow status if it uses fertilizer and take at least two of these eight measures. Okay. And the holding will be assigned red status if it uses fertilizer and does not take any measure from the eight which are recommended by FAO for the use of fertilizer. Okay. So based on the Bangladesh pilot tests that we carried out back in 2018 and 19 that I'm always referring to. We ask first a question as to whether the farmer is using fertilizer and he can answer either yes or no. If the answer is yes, 
then we go to the follow up question and we ask him about these eight measures while explaining each measure briefly to the respondent so that he knows as to what we are talking about so as you can see here out of the eight measures holding number 1 is only practicing two okay and hence you know we assign this holding an acceptable status okay or yellow status holding two is using fertilizer we go to the follow up question we ask them as to which measures have they adopted they are practicing none and hence this holding is classified as non sustainable let's go to holding number 37 use of fertilizer no so we don't even have to go to the follow up question this holding is desirable from the perspective that it's not contributing negatively in terms of its usage of fertilizer and thereafter its impact on the environment holding you know um yeah so holding uh, 39 yes they are using fertilizer and they they are they have adopted four specific measures from the eight listed on the previous slide and hence this holding is assigned desirable or green status and the last step is the same so once the holding and their agricultural land areas are assigned green yellow and red statuses we aggregate those we add up those we divide it by the nationally representative uh, agricultural land area um and and then we 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 basically um estimate the proportions or the percentages so let me go to the excel sheet very quickly So the first question is did this ho agriculture holding use any synthetic or mineral fertilizer or animal manure or slurry for crops the answer could you know it's a yes no question the holding says yes we go to the follow up question did this holding take specific measure to mitigate environmental risk associated with the synthetic and mineral fertilizers the answer is yes we go to the follow up question and then we ask about the eight measures that i just showed you on the slide okay so the first one is follow protocols as per extension or retail outlet directions or local regulation not exceeding recommended doses you know uh, measure 3 use legumes or as cover crops or a component of a multiple crop or pasture system to reduce fertilizer input etc etc okay so based on adherence to or or or, or um, adoption of these management measures you know we then start assigning the holding colors so let me just show you here use of fertilizer yes of the eight measure this holding has adopted three okay total three from the condition you can see here the the farm uses fertilizer but take at least four specific measure to mitigate environmental risk so it doesn't qualify that green you know criteria the farm uses fertilizer and take take at least two measures to mitigate a uh, risk it qualifies that particular criteria and hence we will be assigning this holding yellow or acceptable status okay and so on based on this logic we then assign other agriculture holdings depending on as to whether they are using fertilizer or not and then if they are using fertilizer um, the extent to which they are adhering to the different management measures we assign them green yellow and and red colors okay and the last table is the same which i just explained as part of the presentation so if you have any questions we have 4 minutes 
before Flavio, you know, start presenting his presentation. Do we have any questions? No questions. Okay, uh, Flavio is online. So, if we don't have any question, maybe we can go directly to him. Um, yes, let's just uh, do that. I mean, we just directly go to Flavio and after his presentation, uh, we call it a day and then we resume tomorrow with the rest of the indicators. Yes. Okay, so you, maybe you can stop sharing, uh, Asandia. Flavio, uh, so uh, welcome. Let me introduce you to the others. So Flavio is a colleague of us in the statistics division. So he will be presenting the SDG 241 in the context of the AgriSurvey program and the 50 by 20 initiative. Flavio has a degree in agronomy and another one in economy, and he was the coordinator of the agriculture of the Brazilian Institute of Geographic and Statistics from 2003 to 2015. And at FAO, he contributed to the implementation of the global strategy to improve agriculture and rural statistics as a research coordinator. And since 2018, he acts as technical coordinator in the survey team in the statistics division of FAO. So I leave the floor to, to him for the presentation. Flavio, over to you. Thank you very much, Stefania. Uh, um, and good, mo good morning, everyone. Um, I, I want to know, uh, should I, 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 I share my screen, huh? Yes, please. Yes. Are you seeing my yes, yes, okay, you. good, 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 good. Okay, well, today, well, the, the invitation from Arbad and Stefania is to talk about uh, the program that we are running to assist countries and uh, and um, how a two for one indicator is addressed in these programs. No? Um, uh, my presentation goes first to the AgriSurvey program. Uh, talk about the projects running by the, by, by the AgriSurvey program, the Agris methodology, and how Chufan is integrated in Agris, and then uh, about 5th by 13th initiative. No? Uh, the objectives, uh, the process on country onboarding and how the tools of 5 by 30 incorporate the two for one requirements. So the agri-survey program was a, a result from uh, an initiative that comes before that is the global strategy. So in fact, uh, we have this um, in the since 2008, uh, with the crisis of prices and different well, uh, evaluation of the situation of statistics around the world, uh, have this um, notion that the, the offer in terms of quantity and quality of, of, of agricultural statistics uh, uh, are weak, and have uh, this initiative or the global strategy to develop, to improve the production of agricultural statistics uh, around the world, especially on, on the developing country. Uh, you, one of these um, results of this effort uh, uh, was the development of the Agris survey. Uh, is an agricultural integrated survey that uh, aims to provide basic statistics 
um, and also immersion data, uh, new, new data like uh, in terms of socioeconomic aspects or environmental aspects uh, uh, that today uh, is also required. And, and the project, uh, uh, the program itself uh, aims to uh, help countries on improving their agricultural system and promote this, uh, this approach, the Agri's approach. Um, the program uh, is running two projects. Uh, one uh, is USAID project uh, so funded by the American Co Cooperation Program. Uh, through what we provide technical assistance and fa financial support to Cambodia, Senegal, Uganda. And a Gates project uh, funded by Billion Bill Gates Foundation that provides just technical assistance. And in this case, uh, I involved on this project, Armenia, Costa Rica, Ecuador, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Nepal, and Uruguay. These two projects start in 2018. Uh, and finish this year. So uh, we are fina finalizing these two projects and, and they, they are somehow uh, as a pilot for a bigger pro program project that is the 5 by 30 initiative. The 5 by 30 initiative uh, was launched in 2019, uh, but the onboarding of countries on, on, on the process is, is taken now start this year, mainly end of last year. Uh, countries that were assisted before uh, um, are considered pre-approved countries. And in this moment, uh, we are in the process to engage in the project Cambodia, Georgia, Nigeria, Senegal, Uganda, and Ethiopia. So this involved uh, countries, pre-approved countries involved countries um, uh, supported by Agri survey and also LSMS is a, a program. Uh, the survey team also provides more or less the same kind of support through the survey team uh, uh, in base of technical cooperation programs of FAO. And UTIA problem also, né? with all the uh, all the ways to fund the activities. Well, the Agris Integrated Survey, I believe many of you already know, um, is a multiple pose and modular and integrated survey uh, that uh, covers 10 years program, a cycle of 10 years is the proposal uh, between census. Uh, and um, and go beyond the traditional statistics, agricultural statistics. So uh, to avoid excessive burden, uh, the all the dimensions are spread uh, across the year. So the core model get mainly the basic agricultural data that need every year. And uh, in the Ag, we have four rotating models, uh, economy, labor, methods, and environment, and machinery equipment and assets. And uh, in the screen have more or less the distribution, the proposed distribution in terms of frequency of this kind of data. So um, some is needed more frequently and other less. And this is one proposal, but all, all of this schema could be customized. So um, as I said, we have, uh, in fact, five models on Agris, um, but uh, the annual questionnaire, in fact, is a combination of model, could be only the core, but could be core plus economy or, or, or combining economies with labor, uh, and should be customized. Agris, uh, the, um, the handbook and says that, and this, the method is more or less like a menu of 
items and questions and it depends on the period of the country which kind of information is um, is included in, in, in each year so the idea is really to do a customization according uh, the priority of the country but covering at least all, all these dimensions to so, um, it's important to say that uh, the agri survey uh, methodology was finalized in the end of 2017 in that time the two for one indicator was not uh, uh, defined completely uh, so the agris uh, questionnaires available and all the handbook do not include all requirements of two for some some questions there because a basic question that two for requires like uh, the ad production uh, and other aspects but uh, need additional questions and additional questions to to cover all requirements of two for one so uh, we did this work and we proposed two options and how to to use uh, the agri survey uh, tools to collect data for two for one. One uh, option one is uh, add the questions on the core model, all the additional requirements. We are talking about 32 additional questions. And the other option is to uh, accommodate the, the need of the questions using uh, the core and the economic and environment uh, methods and environment uh, model. In this case, according to the, the distribution of the, of the data collection across the years, um, the data will be collected in, in, in two different years. So um, let me, so in the first option, we are talking about do all the, data required for two for one in a single year that could be uh, organized just in the core model and apply any year but the best way to go is to combine this uh, data collection with the uh, methods and environment model because many of the questions required for two for one is already included in, in this model the second option is uh, we, uh, the idea is to collect socioeconomic uh, uh, um, sub-indicators in the year with the eco model, uh, okay. the economy model, and uh, in the next year with the um, environment uh, model, all the environment indicators. So in this case, the, 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 the results of the sub indicators will have two different years of reference, not, on, not the same year. So two solutions that can be implemented uh, considering the AGRIS uh, system. Uh, the fifth by 2030 initiative has more or less the same goals in terms of improving the capacity of the country to produce agricultural data and, and for, for a better uh, evidence informed policy. But explicitly uh, was um, conceptualized as a, a, a tool to produce the SDG indicator zero hunger. The, 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 the goal two of the SDGs, uh, in particular 231, 232, and 241, the, the sub indicators that are linked to, to survey, survey, agricultural survey uh, as a tool, and also the 5A1 A and B uh, about the gender. So this uh, is explicit. So have this uh, intention to support country on producing the, the, the indicators, these indicators. Um, we, are in, we are in the process of uh, country on board, as I said. Uh, the um, last February was the period for application. Uh, I, I know that many of countries that are represented in this meeting 
uh, ha has applied. Uh, we the, the, nowadays uh, this year the idea is to incorporate six pre-approved countries: Uganda, Cambodia, Senegal, Nigeria, Ethiopia, and Georgia, plus two new countries. And in 2022, uh, Burkina Faso, Malawi, Ghana, Tanzania, Armenia, and Nepal as a pre-approved country, plus other five countries, and so on. So uh, the project has the aim to, to support 50 countries up to 2013. Uh, in general, the, the support goes through from six to eight years of uh, technical assistance and, and financial support. Um, so we have the link here for the, for the program, more details can be assessed later. Um, it is very similar, the approach is on, on speed by step. We have two approaches, two programs, one uh, named Agricultural Survey Program, very similar to AGRIS, uh, but the, the economy and labor model was uh, combined in a single model named income, labor, and, and productivity. And then we have the other two models, uh, production methods, environment, and machine equipment assets. And again, the core model goes every year to, to get the basic data. And, and uh, periodically we have other uh, uh, rotating models. The second program uh, includes a, an additional model named income and life standard measurement. Uh, that collect data on the household, so mainly on the farm, uh, uh, on, on household aspects né? Uh, in the household sector. It's important to say that uh, the 5 by 30 also has attention to, to a good coverage, a complete coverage of our good activities, so including non-household farms and household farms, uh, commercial farms, and uh, Etc. And, and in this case of the of the integrated good and rural survey program, also uh, house non-farm households uh, to provide data in terms of the rural as in the rural areas né, about the uh, life conditions uh, uh, in the rural areas. So the instruments uh, developed are named core egg, uh, similar to the core on agris, uh, on agriculture, the income, labor, and productivity questionnaire, uh, the non-farm income and life, life living standard household questionnaire, uh, machine equipment asset questionnaire, and production medicine environment uh, questionnaire. Uh, in the case of uh, 5 by 30, this basic agricultural questionnaire all already in, in, uh, include the core questions. So when we are talking about ILP HE, we're talking about, uh, uh, about uh, uh, all core data plus economic data and labor data. Uh, in May IG, we are talking about the core and machine equipment assets and so on. So, in fact, uh, if you go to the website and, and download the, the design questionnaire, uh, the core different August, uh, you don't need to, to adapt uh, one model or the other, but is already integrated the core data with a different uh, uh, questionnaire for different years. Uh, in FIP by 30, we have also other variations. Um, so uh, it's possible to, to collect data in one visit. So it's a one year uh, data collection, uh, referring to the previous agricultural year or calendar year, uh, or um, two or more visits approach, uh, where uh, uh, different visits could address the major or the minor seasons, or post planting or post harvest data. In this case, the data are split in uh, different uh, questionnaires 
um, integrated, but different instruments for for different visits, and all all these um, are developed in in service solution, the the, the software developed by, by World Bank for for data collection. Uh, similar with for for Argus, uh, the solution already integrated in the 5 by 30 tools, uh, the requirements of 2 for 1 was completely fully integrated, incorporated already, because the, we have the all the methodology was defined when we developed this these instruments. So uh, we don't need to to add additional uh, questions to to the published. Uh, instruments that they are and uh, again we have this proposal to uh, distribute the the burden in two years so this is uh, uh, the the solution implemented even is possible also to take a decision to to go to the other uh, solution on the single year for all sub indicators just to, to show a bit how it was done. In fact, in the in case of the 30 we took this um, standalone questionnaire that uh, I believe Arbat already talked with, with you, the standalone questionnaire of, of, of 241. And we, all the different requirements, different question was adapted to 530. So in the fit by 30 methodology, uh, the data call, uh, uh, have the unit, unit, different unit of observation, not only the holding, but also the parcel of the plot. So some questions were distributed on the parcel. The example here, land tender is referred to the parcel, not to the holding. So later need to be aggregated. So it's a different way to, to, to get the same information. The same for, for the agricultural area. So uh, we got the, the, the data by, by parcel and should be aggregated to, to come up with the data information for the holding as a whole. Uh, it is, uh, it's like this for all items, uh, even all, all the aspects in terms of uh, environment aspects. Uh, in the case of FIBA 30, uh, the question is in the level, some case in the level of holding, some case in the level of parcel. So, and all this was adapted in the instruments. Um, well, uh, we are about to publish, to finalize this in the peer review process, uh, uh, a document uh, is a working paper from the Fowler Statistics Division where uh, named mainstream SDG indicator for in Agnes and feed by that, where we cover uh, all methodological aspects, the decision taken, the, the approach described the, the indicator itself and the needs and how it was incorporated and have as an annexes, um, the, the standalone questionnaire of two for one, but also the, uh, a version of the Agris model modified it to incorporate the requirements of 241 and the highlighting the 241 questions and the fit by 30 questionnaire. So this document uh, 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 should be available in, in, in two or three months. That's, that's it. Um, so now I'm I think, Flavio, uh, we have finished with your presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, you were very kind, no even uh, with this last minute uh, change of no. timing. So no problem. Uh, you can stop sharing and really thank you very much again. Okay, bye bye. Bye bye. Have a good day. You too. Okay, so it, as I said, it's 30 and uh, with Aspandiar, uh, you already said at the beginning, we are going to, to close the day uh, today at 2.30 sharp Italian time. For sure, it will be maybe very late for you or still you have a part of the day. So I thank you once again for this second day. We have 
uh, recuperated a bit the program of yesterday. We have seen uh, uh, other sub indicators. So we have reached the number of six sub indicators today in total. And tomorrow, for sure, we will finish with the sub indicator and have less crossing as we have time to also cover some other uh, presentation. And for sure, tomorrow we will have a big discussion also with you uh, to see and to understand the reality in your country and the concern you have on the calculation and the reporting of the SDG 241. So thank you very much uh, again and see you tomorrow. We start as today at 11 Italian time sharp. Okay, bye bye to everyone. Bye bye. bye, -bye.